like everybody to grab your hymn book. And in the very back, in the responsive reading section, turn to 716. This is the Christian and the Social Order. Hymn number 716. Well, it's not responsive reading 716. says, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin, and you are convicted by the law as transgressors. What does it profit, my brethren, if a man says he has faith but has not works? Can his faith save him? If a brother or sister is ill-clad, and in lack of daily food. And one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warm and filled. Without giving them the things needed for the body, what does it profit? Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. From... 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse, we're going to begin reading in verse 17. <clears throat> Only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned and to which God has called him. This is my rule in all the churches. Was there anyone at the time of this call already circumcised? Let him not seek to remove the marks of circumcision. Was there anyone at the time of his call and circumcised? Let him not seek circumcision. For neither their circumcision counts for anything nor their uncircumcision, but keeping the commandments of God. Each one should remain in the condition in which he was called. Were you a bond servant when called? And do not be concerned about it. But if you can gain your freedom, avail yourself of the opportunity. For he who was called in the Lord as a bondservant is a free man of the Lord. Likewise, he who was a free, he who was free when called is a bondservant of Christ. You were bought with a price. Do not become bondservants of men. So, brothers, in whatever condition each was called, there let them remain to God. Father God, we ask you to speak to us today. We ask that you would open our eyes that we may see your message clearly. Open our ears that we may hear your mind. Father God, open our minds to give us understanding. Open our hearts. They're not only able, but that they're willing to receive the message you sent today. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. I only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. This is my rule in all the churches. Uh, how, how many uh, uh, of you have been Christians for? You have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you have been walking the walk of Christianity for a, for a good period. This is only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned you. How many of you have had a cake? Hey, how many of you have had an easy life? Have things just run smooth and you never had any hiccups or any roadblocks or anything? Anything, you know, when you become a Christian, nothing bad ever happens to you, right? No, that's not true. 
What, what does happen is, is, as a Christian, your view of life should change. When, it, when he says, let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him, basically what Paul's saying is, regardless of what's going on in your life, you should be doing two things. You should be loving God, and you should be loving your neighbor. Everything else falls into those two guidelines. In, in, in the response of read, we said... What does the Lord require of us? To do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with God, to seek justice, to correct oppression, to defend the barbarous, to plead for the widow, to let justice roll down. Basically, he said, be a Christian. Now, the thing that we face today in society is there are so many things. There are so many things in this world that happen. Unpleasant things. Sickness and disease and tragedy and murder. And, and, and we, we live in a world that is so broken. Even the broken people who know they're broken don't realize that they're broken anymore. It, it's become so normal for things to be wrong or to, for things to be non or unrighteous, for things to be unholy, for that, that people have, have decided, rather than to fight it, to call it war. They, they have decided that, this, you know, if enough people say it's okay, then, then well, I guess it's okay. The, the, the people of the world who decided, we don't need God to tell us what's right or wrong. We can, we can make those decisions. Right. Well, the life that the Lord has assigned to him and which God has called him. How many of you realize as a Christian you, you're called? That God has a call in your life. You may not be sure what that is. Many, many Christians are. And, and, and I, I would admit that the, the vast majority of Christians have a very simple calling. That calling All that is there. Being a Christian is many, many things. It, it's, it's learning. It, it's, it's being a disciple of Christ. It's learning to follow God. Now, despite what the world may believe, God's not just a great big old meanie up in the sky that's up there telling us you can't do this and you can't do that. You can't go out. You can't have fun. You can't spend time with your God's not like that. God sent His Son into the world so that you could have life and have it abundantly. God doesn't want you going around being broke, not being able to do anything that you want to do. God died on the, the cross to empower you to be able to do anything. He simply gave you the choice to do what he, he He took away He, he, he took away the bondage of blaming someone else for what's wrong. When, when Jesus went to the cross, it wasn't for your sins alone that he died. It wasn't alone for all the things that you've done wrong in life. Just so he could forgive you and get you to heaven, he did it for the whole he did it for every sinner that's born. Lead the life that the Lord has assigned to you. Is your life free from trouble? <laughs> if it is, I'm going to talk to you find out what you're doing. Now, 
lead the life that has been assigned to you. Make a godly choice. You know, as, as, as a Christian, as a, as a pastor, I, I get exposed to a lot of things. And people tell me stuff that goes on in their lives. And, and you know, a, a lot of people have a lot of troubles. And, and, and believe it or not, most people, most, most Christians, the, the turmoil that they experience in life it is because of what's happening to someone else. What's happening to a daughter or a son or a husband or a wife or a mother or a father or a grandchild or a niece or a nephew or a friend. Or it, may be, it may be what's going on at work or it may be what's going on out in society. And, 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 and you know, most, most, of, most of those people react to how it affects them personally. But, you know, one, one thing I, I, I figured out <clears throat> not too long ago is that I can't control what happens to somebody else. I can't control the decision that everybody else But what I can control is what I do. Now, I may have thoughts that are unkind. I may have feelings that run out of control every now and then. I may experience things in, in, in this world that just What I can control is what I do. God, God, through that cross, has empowered me to take responsibility for my actions. You know that you can get mad and not sin. That you can get mad as a wet hornet you can take the situation and make a Christ decision. Because regardless of what's happening, my rule, God's rule, love God first, Having said all that, have you ever experienced a time when your life went, went into a turmoil and things kind of went haywire or out of control and, and you just kind of were losing it? And, and, and you had that, that, that person who was there, even though they might not have done anything except for be there, to be with you. Those are the situations that God has said do not cry. He said, this is my rule in all
know, God, God told us in the book of Ecclesiastes to enjoy the life that God has given us, regardless of its circumstances. You know what? Despite everything that's going on in your life, despite everything that's ever happened to you in your life, Jesus Christ loves Loves that neighborhood. Loves that friend. Loves that son or that daughter, or that mother, or that father, or that brother, or that sister. And all their right decisions. He loves them. Verses. Basically, he says, regardless of what you're dealing with, you follow the example of circumcision, whether you're circumcised or uncircumcised, it doesn't matter. You, you follow the rules of God. Follow God. You, you know, in life, when, when tensions get high, regardless of what causes them to get high, when, when tensions get, get high, it's hard to be like that. And, and for, for some people, those, those situations happen all the time. It's always hard to be here. For some Christians, those situations happen every now and then. I, I, I know that as a pastor, it, I get exposed to. There, 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 are, there are times when loving your neighbor is just um, sometimes you just want to say if you would quit making bad decisions your life would be so much better. Then they go I'm not perfect. I'm not you. I can't. You just can't say, well, get you to it. Because as long as you make bad decisions, guess what? You're going to have bad decisions. It's a consequence. If you read the Bible, you would know that when you make bad decisions, God chastises and God punishes. I can't change your decision. Maybe you shouldn't say everything. Trust me, I don't. Are you a In life, in the life that God has assigned you, in the life that God has You want to, it's easy to pray at home when you're sitting beside your bed or you're getting ready for bed or you're getting up in the morning. It's, it's easy to pray when there ain't nobody around. You know why? Nobody can use your shelf. So when God answers your prayer, it's like, glory to God. God did something. You had nobody
forcing you out of your comfort zone to, to make you do things that you might not normally do if you hadn't been put on the spot. Now, spot walk is thing. I don't do that to you, man. Most often, most often when I when I, I rip you out of your comfort zone, it's to show you that you can do it. The power of God is inside of you, and you are more than able to do what I ask you. Pray, pray, pray. Go out in, go out in public, or you go visit family members, friends, pray for them. Man, that's just hard because you know what? God may not answer your prayer. Called by God to be set, to live with Him for all the time. He, he has placed you in a world that is broken, that is lost, and that is full of sin. So that you can be an example. so you can be just like everyone else. So that you can be an example. As, as, as that empowered Christian, you can show the world that it is okay to have joy in a world of home. It is okay to laugh and enjoy yourself while you're having problems. Indeed, you, you know most. It, most of the time, when, when you walk into a bad situation, the most helpful thing you can do is to find a way to make people laugh in their in their pain or in their suffering or in their trials or in the the, the ultimate torment of having to wait. Regardless of what happens, okay. life may not be good for the audience. Life may not be what you want it to be. But God says you. Accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Do you love God? First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 17. I say, I say, Only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. Father God, Lord Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, as we gather before you today, we do thank you.
praise you for the life that you have given us. And we ask that you would deliver us strength, freedom, to live and lead the life that you have assigned to us. Regardless of what's taking place, Father God, let us enjoy the abundance in life. You'll take your hymnals and turn to him. 281, speak to my heart. Let's stand. <laughs>